hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about pedigree and family trees. We're going to do this video. We're going to cover the next top point, which just talks about some of the more roles of hybridization and what we use it for. It says students will process information from secondary sources to describe an example of hybridization within the species and explain the purpose of this hybridization. Also, there where that word species comes up again. So we have to talk about an example of hybridization within a species and explain why that it gets why it happens as well or why that it gets used for what that gets used for. So first, I want to talk about you know the species examples. So if, for example, we talk about hybrid car. And we say hybrid cars, they work on petrol, they're a mixture of petrol and ethanol, that's biofuel. So that's a hybrid car, you know, it's not just one, it's a combination of two different things. If, for example, we say, you know, hybrid of a species, this is actually a hybrid of a species. So you can see there's a bit of horse and a bit of zebra in there. So horse and zebras are, are different species. So if a horse has offspring with a zebra, then you produce this infertile zebra horse. There's actually a name, I forgot the name for it, but this here would be the offspring, the hybrid of both a horse and a zebra. But the actual dot point is asking us for within a species. So this is two species. We want to have hybrid hybrids within a species. And the best example that comes to mind would be dogs. So dogs all belong to the same species. Even though they look very different, they're the same species. And obviously you can imagine there's so many different types of breeds within a, within the actual dog species, that if you have two different types of dog breeds that make a new baby, that is a hybrid of that one species. It looks different, but still very similar in terms of shared characteristics. Just like, for example, when like, very, hybrid just means variations. So even if you have, if your your parents, by having you as a child, you're a hybrid of your parents. So hybrid just means that there's variation, but we're looking at hybrids within one species, so, for example, the dog species or the human species or whatever else, and have to explain how this hybridization gets used. So, I give the examples. Now, I actually give two examples, even though Dopan only asked for one. I give two examples. The first one is quite interesting. So, this one is comes from ancient China, and we use this hybridization about not we, but the ancient Chinese used this hybridization about two thousand five hundred years ago to mix two members of the same species. And remember, even though these are plants, plants are still animals and organisms, not, not animals, but organisms. And organisms are still, you know, any organism can have a different type of species. So plants also have different types of species. But these are citrus fruit, citrus fruit. And many of them belong to the same species. So for example, the pomelo, which is this down here, and the mandarin are actually members of the same species. Just like for example, different races of humans are the same species. So they just they look different, but they're still very similar. And this is obviously from the last video we established that this would be the marriage line. So what you can imagine is that they just, the ancient Chinese decided they would mix the pomelo and the mandarin about 2,500 years ago and to see what happened. And the reason why they did that is because it produced this offspring, this descent line. And the, this, the actual offspring they produced was the orange. And so that's quite interesting. We have the orange which comes from a mixture, a hybrid, of both the pomelo and the mandarin. And it says, explain the purpose of this hybridization. Well, the orange has you know, features of both, so it obviously has that nice sweet taste of the mandarin, but it also has that fleshy texture, the fleshy texture of the pomelo. So by having this hybrid, this orange hybrid, we've created a new fruit, so a new fruit that has both the characteristics, shared characteristics of the mandarin and the pomelo. Some often the people use hybridization to actually produce new fruits or whatever else it is that is very different from the other from the combinations. In this case, the combination with the pomelo and the mandarin, they're different but still quite similar. They have similar characteristics, but the new fruit might be really popular. So obviously, oranges, you know, we like oranges are nowadays they're more, more popular than mandarins, but they actually come from a combination of mandarin and pomelo. That's example number one. And the other example is often it's quite relevant for Australia. So in Australia, we often want to have milk-producing cows. So cows that produce lots of milk. And 
because it's a very scientific kind of way of doing it, we actually want to make sure we get the most milk out of our cows. And the way we do that is we look at bulls. We obviously have bulls and they have offspring with cows. A bull is a male version of a cow and cow is a female version. What happens is we look for the bulls which produce the offspring with the highest milk production. So the bull is selected and the one that is selected is the one that has the, high, the babies that have produced most milk. Now they're selected but they actually they're usually they don't get to directly cross with a cow but their semen or their sperm is taken. I'm not going to go into procedure how that happens because it's actually quite gross and you know, this, I want to keep this PG rated but um, they take the semen from the bull and then they inject that semen into the cows and that the way that works is then they produce offspring that actually produces really good milk and high amounts of milk as well. Right? So they take the, the bull with the highest milk producing capacity they cross over the cows and the offspring, so this is the marriage line, the top one, and down here is the descent line. And then the, the offspring itself will be, in most cases obviously they want to have cows because cows produce milk, but the cow itself that they produce, the offspring, will be a very high milk producing cow. So this one produces lots of milk. So why did we do this hybridization? Well that's pretty straightforward. Obviously the reason why we did this, this hybridization between a bull which has lots of which was just known to produce offspring, which produces lots of milk. We cross a bull with cows, so that specific bull, to produce offspring that have high milk producing capacity. And that means we can actually get more milk out of every cow. So it's the milk to cow ratio. It doesn't actually, I mean, the milk to cow ratio doesn't actually exist, but you can just imagine for every cow, we produce more milk now because of this hybridization. And that's why we do it. So I'll go over the dot point again. It says, students will process information from secondary sources to describe an example of hybridization within a species. The description was just, you know, the mellow and the mandarin being crossed, producing the orange. And that happened in ancient China 2,500 years ago. That would be the description. And then to explain the purpose would be we do it to get new features, new traits, or the best traits for both the parents. For example, you now we have the trait, the sweet trait from the mandarin and the fleshy trait from the pomelo. And the actual new offspring, the hybrid, has both of those. So by doing this, we create new types of fruits or you know, superior milk-producing cows, whatever it is. So, yeah, so we first have to describe the example, and then you have to explain why that actually happens. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.